Hello everyone, welcome back to Just My Stupid Opinion. I'm Adrian Lloyd. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at the um, at the political ads that have been put out by both the Liberal Party and the Conservative Party. Uh, these were the ads where they ended up uh, choosing on their slogans for the upcoming election. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through, listen to them, and uh, break them down. This is the Liberal ad I have up here first. And this one especially we're going to get really into because... Uh, there's more to it than there is in the uh, than there is in the conservative ad, but uh, what we're really going to be looking for is the um, is the subliminal messaging that is put in the appeal to emotions because um, uh, one thing about politics that nobody really wants to admit, but uh, it's been so they've looked into studies when it comes to the political brain, and it has to do. A lot of the decisions made based on in politics has to do with emotions. It actually uh, politics appeals to the emotional side of the brain as much as people want to think it appeals to their their logical side of the brain, their rational side of their brain. The main thing that uh, political parties always focus on is actually going for after their what they is considered the jugular in politics, which is your emotions. Emotions are a lot uh, more difficult to control. So this is what they are trying to appeal to. So we're going to take a look through. What we're going to do is we're going to watch through it once, and then we're going to go back to the beginning, and then we're going to sort of break it down and see what they're trying to uh, what they're trying to get at. So this is the liberal ad first called "Choose Forward," and uh, let's get into that one. I got into politics to help people, like the people I've served here in Papineau for more than a decade, people who work hard to make ends meet. Parents who want to build a better life for their kids. Canadians who want our country to stand for something positive in a world that's grown darker. Conservative politicians have a different approach. When we raised taxes on the wealthiest 1% so we could cut them for the middle class, they tried to stop us. When we created the Canada Child Benefit that gives hundreds of dollars a month tax-free to regular families across the country, they tried to stop that too. And now we've got a real climate plan that will reduce pollution and put more money in your pockets, and they're even trying to fight that. The Conservatives like to say they're for the people, but then they cut taxes for the wealthy and cut services for everybody else. In October, we've got a choice to make. Keep moving forward and build on the progress we've made, or go back to the politics of the Harper years. I am for moving forward for everyone. All right, so there we go. That was the liberal ad, and there's a lot that we can break down in it. Of course, they're trying to present Justin Trudeau as a person who is fighting for the common man, although this is a regular trope that is used in politics. Uh, just about every party want to kind of make it seem like they're fighting for the people, although that's very rarely the case, and I would say that is even less of the case. When it comes to Justin Trudeau, he is a very self-serving individual, always has been. Uh, a very arrogant individual, but they're trying to, in this ad, they're trying to push all that that we've seen over the last four years to the side and try and make it him, rebrand him in a new light. Uh, not just rebrand himself, but rebrand the party, because this was a party that came in promising significant changes and then refused to to deliver on those. This was things from a different voting system to, you know, the tax the rich, uh, to being more transparent in government, and they've more or less failed in just about every single aspect. So they're trying to rebrand themselves. Now the first thing in this ad is we have here is we got a picture of the bus driver as he's driving down the road. This is going to be something that they show a few times in it, and it's very... Uh, it, it's what they're doing with it is that you're going to notice that when they're talking about uh, Justin Trudeau, they're going to be driving down a straight path as if he's a straightforward person, straight shooting, but also that we're striving towards the future. You're going to see this a few times, and then you're going to notice something when it comes to the bus driver when they start uh, talking about the conservatives. So <clears throat> let's get into it. Let's uh, just break it down bit, bit by bit. I got into politics to help people. So the first thing first, we've got Justin Trudeau pictured on a bus. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell from here. It looks like it might be an OC bus in Ottawa, although it's possible maybe it's somewhere in uh, Toronto or Montreal that they're doing it. But again, this is sort of trying to present them as the 
the common man. They don't have him. They got him just in his suit with his, uh, without his suit, with just a sort of a regular shirt with his sleeves rolled up, as if he's uh, this kind of guy that goes into work, rolls up his sleeves, goes to work every day, takes the bus every day. Um, so this is something a lot of people can relate to, especially people who come from the lower class, but even people in the middle class. I know there's plenty of people that work in the middle class that still take the bus to work every day. So this is trying to appeal to them because they're definitely the largest voting bloc. But even just in this alone, he's also trying to appeal to the minority vote because there are many minorities that do take the bus. I've taken the bus more than I like to, uh, more than I like to admit, more than I like to talk about. And definitely you do see a lot of minorities on the bus. But this is the whole sort of picture about that. He's just one with the people, although you can tell already how unrealistic this picture is because anybody who's really been on the bus knows that uh for instance you got people standing in the background people only really stand when it is incredibly busy on the bus and you're packed in there like cattle so right then and there it it, it does it's not gonna it's not really gonna fly i think with a lot of people um what we, uh, is it Ra not Rachel Notley? I'm trying to think. Andrea Horwath, who's the leader of the NDP in Ontario, she tried to do the exact same thing during the 2018 provincial debate in Ontario, where she was showing pictures of herself on the bus as if these 100k plus politicians, like salary, $100,000 salary each year, politicians really do take the bus to work, and Trudeau doesn't have an entourage of a dozen cars that that uh lead him and follow him around wherever he goes or that he doesn't fly absolutely everywhere hmm. and again with that with what he says right off the start that he got into politics to help people this is sort of the image that they're trying to present like the people i've served here in papineau for more than a decade people who work hard to make ends meet so what we're seeing here is the small business owner shaking hands with Justin Trudeau to try and make it seem as if he's the type of person that's there in order to help them. As if he his policies have actually been there to assist the small business owner. Now this is important for the liberals right now because many small business owners have been struggling underneath the Trudeau government. And they've been finding hard to make ends meet. His taxes that he's put on these companies have made it a lot harder for them to keep their doors open. So it's important for him to brand himself as a friend to the small business because the small business is the uh, staple of uh, is the staple of Canada. These WalMarts and these huge uh, corporation stores they're they're sort of a new arrival in Canada. But for a long time, it always was the small convenience store, the family that runs the convenience store at the corner of the street that really was uh, that really made Canada. So he's trying to present himself as being one of these people. We're also going to see something else right here, which is going to be his appeal for diversity. It's just right after this. Parents who want to build a better life for their kids. Canadians who want our country to stand for something positive. So you'll notice that is people from all walks of life. You've got people from all race, religions, creeds, and colors in uh, just right off the start. And this is because it's trying to play into what... Justin Trudeau likes to scream every time he's got himself backed into a quarter. It's diversity is our strength. You know, multicultural, we're a multicultural country. Uh, something that was started by his father. So this is what he's trying to do with that because, he, again, once again, he's trying to play up this trope that he says as if he's actually done something good by this appeal to diversity and multiculturalism and of course we've got here him the very determined look on his face as he's listening to their hardships and getting ready to go fight for them in the house of commons to make sure that these people uh that all of their concerns are heard and will be addressed this is he's got to do this because this is exactly what he hasn't done over the last four years, he hasn't addressed any of these people, and he just falls back on the same talking points that uh, that he's used over the last four years, and no one's really buying it anymore. So he's trying to appeal to the emotional side of using the terms diversity and multiculturalism by putting this imagery up on uh, on screen of him engaging with these people, was showing them it's like this is the true Canada. Moving on in a world that's grown darker conservative politicians have a different approach now so this is uh once again trying to put an image into your head 
as soon as he starts talking about the conservatives they draw you got this scene right here where they're driving by with dollar signs all on the window so this is trying to put into your head that uh it's trying to put into your head this uh, idea that the conservatives are the party of the rich they're the party for the one percent and uh, that they're they don't care about the middle class or lower class or the common people that the that the trudeaus uh, and the liberals do but if you're going to vote for the conservatives you're voting for the rich party this is really what it's all about uh this is going to play into something he says right after this as well when we raised taxes on the wealthiest one percent so we could cut them for the middle class, they tried to stop us. All right, so one thing that he ha reason he has to bring this up is have to do with how he's acted, how his government has acted over the last four years, because he ran on this pledge of raising of a progressive tax, raising taxes on the top one percent in order to assist the the middle and lower classes when he hasn't done this. In fact, there was an article out of, uh, I think it was the National Post, uh, some point within the last year, that was saying that underneath the Trudeau government, the middle class is paying, 85% uh, of the middle class is paying more in taxes than they were before he came into office. But he's also trying to deflect what we know about him, what we found out since, uh, I think, back in, I think it started in 2017 or so, uh, where we were finding out uh, through the Panama Papers and the Paradise Papers, we were finding out that many people that were involved with him were hiding their money overseas, uh, so that way they didn't have to pay taxes. One was his finance minister, Moneybags Morneau, who was doing this, who's also get, uh, who's also been uh, investigated several times by the ethics commissioner for stuff that he's done, and I think. For one of them, he was found guilty as well. Um, but then we also have the Bronfmans, the Bronfman family, who are are what the Liberal Party, one of the Liberal Party's largest fundraisers, and the Bronfmans are one of the richest families in all of Canada. So it's trying to deflect that the fact that this whole idea that uh, that the Conservatives are the ones that actually are the party for the rich because they're willing to cut the taxes on the top 1%, but they're not giving a tax cut to anybody else. Uh, so he's... The one thing about a lot of these, uh, why I've noticed that it seems like a lot of rich people do tend to lean left, it actually makes a lot more sense to me that it has more to do that they can afford to live underneath this progressive world that they want. They can pay their employees a larger minimum wage. They can pay the higher taxes, but their competition, the small business owner, cannot. They can't afford to take on more staff if they've got to pay them more. Like, for instance, underneath Ontario, uh, in 2018, just at the start of 2018, we saw the rise in minimum wage from, I think it was a $11.25 or $11.50, all the way up to $14 an hour. And so the big corporations, they can afford to pay this, but the small business owner cannot. They can't afford to have a carbon tax put on top. So a lot of these rich people actually tend to lean more left these days because in the end, they'll stand up. They can, they can weather the storm, but their competition cannot. Their competition can't weather this storm. And in the end, they're the only option left for people to go to. So then they'll make more money because once all the competition is destroyed, then everyone will suddenly flock to the only mega store that's left in order to get whatever it happens to be, their groceries or their supplies or their technology, whatever it happens to be. So Trudeau is trying to deflect this and put the blame back onto the conservatives. When we created the Canada Child Benefit that gives hundreds of dollars a month tax-free to regular families across the country, they tried to stop that too. Okay, well, one thing about that is he brings up about this child benefit package that is tax-free. It might be tax-free, but that is tax money that's going towards this. So it's more spending when you already have a huge deficit, when we already have uh, something like a trillion dollars in debt that we owe. This is trying to deflect from that because it's also, you got to think about, the average Canadian these days can't afford to have a big family. The average Canadian has, when they have kids, what? They have somewhere between one and three. Usually I would say about two kids. Um, 
But when you think about the new arrivals in Canada, the immigrants in Canada, these are people come from cultures where they do have large amount of kids. They'll have three, four, five, six kids, sometimes more. And the child benefit package pays out based on how many kids you have, not just you have a family, so here's a set amount of money. So those people, those new arrivals, those new Canadians will be receiving a huge chunk of the money from that. And if these people are now eligible to vote, if they are Canadian citizens who can vote now in the upcoming election, then this is appealing to them because the minority vote is a big demographic in Canada now. So to capture that vote is cap is means you capture a lot of votes. And again, when you think about a lot of these people tend to vote on their what is best for their people, you know, if it is the the Chinese community or the Indian community or whoever the community happens to be, whatever party benefits that community, they'll vote for. So he's trying to deflect again from his large amount of spending, but also about how you, who is born here and raised here, who has worked tirelessly and paid into your taxes your all your life, you're not really benefiting nearly as much from this as the new arrivals, the new immigrants are in Canada. And then he goes on to say, and now we've got a real climate plan that will reduce pollution and put more money in your pockets, and they're even trying to fight that. And also trying to deflect from the reality of the carbon tax. Because the carbon tax doesn't really do anything in order to stop people from using CO2. I mean, this is they try and point to BC, but the point is, even since BC had the carbon tax put in place, they have actually not reduced their emissions at all or really moved over to re renewable energy sources. They're still on these, uh, on the car, they've actually Im increased their carbon footprint underneath of the carbon tax. So they're taxing you more. He's also exempted, the Trudeau government and Catherine McKinnon have exempted large, big corporations from having to pay into the carbon tax. One reason is they said, well, you know, these places are going to, uh, they're going to leave Canada then. They'll go to somewhere else where they don't have to pay the, the carbon tax or these other taxes that you have in place. So you're going to lose jobs. But so then these, the largest polluters, according to Trudeau, don't have to pay, but the average citizen does to heat your home, to fill your gas tank. You have to pay this carbon tax. And then the rebates that you're supposed to get, the money back you're supposed to get, we found out that they were promising you'll get all your money back. You know what? You might even get more of your money back. Well, that doesn't seem to be the case because people are not receiving nearly as much money as they were promised. So it's been a failure. They're, they're, those who are really guilty of the polluting, as Trudeau would put it, are the ones not paying into this when the average citizen is. But he's also trying to deflect from from... I know I've brought this up a couple times before, I'm, some of you may know, some of you may not, about the carbon tax was a UN, uh, was actually a UN campaign in order to get more money for themselves because the UN is going broke and that has a lot to do with uh, corruption. Uh, a lot of it has to do with corruption. So in 2012, they released, uh, it was, they were taught, they released, um, I don't know if you call it an article, but a report, let's say, where they were talking about ways that they could make more money in order to finance what they do. And one thing they had on there was the carbon tax. Uh, I don't have it saved on this computer. It's saved on my laptop. Uh, but what this, uh, what this report was talking about is if you put a $20, uh, a $20 tax on, per ton on carbon, then that would bring up about $250 billion in revenue. That revenue would be collected by the governments, by your federal government, but would be earmarked for international cooperation. So pretty much what they're saying is that that carbon, the money you make in the carbon tax was going to be sent away to the UN. So that money goes out to the UN, and then they're going to use more tax money to try and buy back, give back to you. Which again, also makes you wonder, if, if you're just going to spend money, and then it's going to be returned to you, why would you reduce your carbon emissions if you're just making that money back? It doesn't make sense. So the failure of the policy to begin with, the the fact that that money is going back to the UN, more money getting shipped out of the country, 
and then uh and then also taking those who are the actual polluters out of the equation so they don't have to pay into it but the average canadian does don't forget too that right now despite the fact they talk about we need a carbon tax global warming the environment they're also letting a lot of corporations just pollute our clean water sources they're letting them just dump countless amounts of sewage into the saint lawrence river for an example so it's trying to deflect from this huge failure of the trudeau government that is the carbon tax moving on the Conservatives like to say they're for the people, but then they cut taxes for the wealthy and cut services for everybody else. Okay, so clearly that's a shot at the Doug Ford government because he ran on a platform of, like, his slogan was for the people. And then, granted, Doug Ford has lost a huge amount of popularity in the short time that he has been in office because of the tax, uh, the cuts that he's making. Um, I don't approve of all the cuts that he's made. I know it was necessary, and I was prepared for those cuts. Um, but uh, this is where they're taking the shots at them that if they're cutting, uh, that they're making these cuts to the public sector. But it is also necessary because he's leaving out how underneath the Wynne uh, and McGinty government, the Liberal government in Ontario, that there was a huge amount of debt that was racked up. To the point where now Ontario has the largest sub-sovereign debt in the world, as far as we know. It, our debt is worse than freaking California's right now, which is saying a lot. So he's leaving that out, and how there's a lot of cleanup that needs to happen in Ontario. But then the symbolism that is used as he's talking about this, you'll see. Healthy and cut services. So... You'll notice I was talking at the very beginning about the bus driver and how they're going down the pass. As soon as she starts talking about the conservatives and their cuts, which is something that Andrew Shear is going to run on. We all know he's going to run on cutting taxes and stuff. The bus driver makes a turn. Now, the symbolism of that is underneath the Trudeau government, we're going straight and true. We're going forward into the future. We're doing what needs to be done. But when you go to the conservatives, you're going to make that turn and you're going backwards all of a sudden. He get, And he makes reference to it at the end, as you heard in the first time around, that he's going to make reference to the Harper years again. Four years in and he's still going to make reference to that. But this is the symbolism of the bus driver who makes the turn right as they're talking about the conservatives and the cuts that they're going to make. And then, of course, for everybody else, they've got the average person on the bus as they're talking about the tax cut. And, of course, a mother with her children trying to show that you're the ones who are going to be hurt by this. You're the ones that they're really going after. Not the top one percent, not the really rich one, but it's the you, the the mother and father, you, the ones trying to start your family, the ones who go to work every day. You're the ones who are who are really under attack here. In October, we've got a choice to make. Keep moving forward and build. So, two things on this. Actually, hold, hold on. on the progress we've made or go back to the. So, here they're doing two things. You'll notice that, uh, first of all, they're kind of, once again, playing up into the diversity multicultural trope. As you kind of look through and you see that uh, you've got people, once again, from all races, creeds, and colors interacting with each other. Everybody's smiling, everybody's happy. happy. This is the Canada that we have. Uh, this is the Canada underneath the Trudeau government. The other thing is, you see specifically in this woman that you see here and here with this woman, is that they're looking out the window, but they're not just looking out the window, they're looking forward out the window. They're underneath the Trudeau government is what it's trying to present. You're looking forward into the future, into uh, forward toward progress, instead of looking back or reverting to back to those old dark years the the dark ages of the harper government this is sort of what they're trying to present with uh what they're showing you here or go back to the politics of the harper years i am for moving forward for everyone and then of course just presenting once again that trudeau is the only man the only political leader that can lead us forward for absolutely everyone so that's the breakdown of the Liberal uh, Party ad that we have here. Um, so we're going to get into the uh, conservative one now with Andrew Scheer. Now there's a lot less here that we can actually uh, that we can actually go through because it's a very 
it's a very straightforward ad, kind of a milk toast ad where it's just got Andrew Shear talking to the camera. But anyway, let's get into it. My plan for Canadians, lower the cost of living and leave more money in your pockets. I believe that Canadians across this country are so frustrated because they're working so hard and they're following all the rules, but they feel like they're falling further and further behind or that they're barely getting by. I have a plan to lower the cost of living, to make life more affordable, to leave more money in the pockets of Canadians for their kids, for themselves, or for their aging parents. Because it's time for you to get ahead. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is. And again, there's not really much to get into here, aside from the fact that Andrew Shear is, he's going on a, what I'll call, a boomer conservative message of the lowering taxes, smaller government type thing, which I think is actually, for a lot of the younger, more right-leaning people in Canada, it's it's not really going to land nearly as much because I think they have bigger problems that they want to deal with, although they are happy to hear about the lowering of taxes, number one. But uh, the, it was quite clear that this is what he was going to run on, which is why in Trudeau's message, he clearly took a shot at the idea of cutting the tax for the 1%. Um, but the thing is, too, is you want to look at the difference between where uh, the location of the Trudeau ad and the and the sheer ad because you look at the we go back and we look through this he's on a bus traveling through a city showing small business owners uh inside of the city trudeau's clearly trying to appeal to the urban uh, voter which is where the liberals have made their killings for a long time it's always in the cities if you look at areas such as uh, well most of the cities anywhere you go then you'll notice that this is where always the left-wing parties tend to dominate for the most part. In certain areas around the country, in the rural areas, they will have, you know, the NDP will get their, will get their shot at the ridings too. Um, but yeah, Montreal, Toronto, Ontario, and all the cities across of Canada, those are really always been the liberal hubs. So that's who they're trying to broadcast their message to. Now you look at this one of Andrew Scheer. And he's got a bunch of trees in the background. He's kind of more off the grid, if you want. He's not in the city from the looks of it. And this is trying to appeal to the rural voter because this is where the conservatives have done well. It always has to do in the rural ridings. So this is where the symbolism, what Andrew Shear's trying to do, is has to do that he's just another person who's from the small town, from the country, he from the farming of the farmlands. And this is where he's trying to appeal to. He's especially going to try he's trying to appeal to the Western Bloc of Canada. So we're talking Saskatchewan, we're talking uh we're talking um uh, Alberta, Manitoba, all, all these places have been for the most part gone more conservative anyway, especially in areas such as Alberta. And we know that the Albertans are going to vote for him, or are definitely much more on the conservative side, mainly because of the Trudeau government's inaction when it comes to pipelines, to the point where we've seen thousands of, hundreds of thousands of pipeline workers that are out of work. And these are the people that try and, um, these are the people that support their family based on this. Sort of the, the guy who gets up before the sun's up to go to work, and who comes home as the sun setting type of uh, of workers, who's Andrew Shear is trying to appeal to, trying to appeal to those from the small towns. So his his message is very much more milk toast, just because there's there's not much to it. Uh, again, in the appeal for emotion, Andrew Shear has sort of has failed quite greatly in this ad for the most part. Aside from where he's starting to talk about how people are having trouble getting ahead. Um, this is, uh, this is definitely something that he can capitalize on if he plays his cards right, because even recently, within the last few months, I think, there was an article out of, I think it was the CBC, where it was talking about how uh, nearly half of Canadians are $200 away from insolvency, from going broke, not being able to pay their bills. So this is something that a lot of people especially those from the lower uh, the lower class, can definitely relate to. But just saying it isn't going to be enough for him. He's got to be able to hammer the message home. 
Uh, but for, and I think there's another ad that could actually does a better job of this that I'm going to show right after this. But first, I want to get down into the actual slogan itself. It, time for you to get ahead. To me, that is not very different to choose forward. In both of these slogans, the choose forward and time it's time for you to get ahead, in both of these slogans, it's trying to suggest that you've been left behind and that these individual parties are the ones that are going to come in and are going to come in and make your life better by their policies. You vote for th this, these parties, whether that be conservative or liberal, and they're going to make sure that your life gets better that it's time for you to get ahead. It's time to choose forward. I really don't see a huge difference between these uh, two slogans, to be honest. And I'm not really, like, I, I. you look at what the liberals have done over the last four years, and it's been terrible. But when I look at what the conservatives really have planned, it's not really going to change anything. The, liber the conservatives are not capitalizing on a lot of the problems that a lot of Canadians are starting to have. They're not talking about the banking system, which is set up to, to get into more debt. It's set up to fail for the average person. I mean, like, uh, we've consistently been building up more debt for a long time, and one of the things is because we're, we're starting to borrow from private banks rather than borrowing from the Bank of Canada, who actually were there in order to lend money at extremely low interest rates or or lend it pretty much for free so you didn't have to pay back interest rates where when you start borrowing from these private banks then they're charging you interest rates so the more money you build up the more you're paying in interest rates so it's gotten to the point where canadians like the all the money we spend on our debt almost every single year it's really just going towards, uh, it's really just going, most of it, 70, 75% of it, to pay off the interest payments, not even pay off the debt. So they're not addressing this problem. They're not addressing the problem of immigration that we're having in Canada because Canada has always been a welcoming society, but it's even the average Canadian is starting to have enough. They're starting to see how it's, Despite the fact that more jobs get created, there's nothing available for them. It's still hard to find a job in Canada. And this ends up what ends up happening. I mean, Trudeau was flaunting around how they created nearly a million jobs in the four years since he had been in office. But at the same time, when you have 300,000 new arrivals coming into Canada every single year, and that's just in the official immigrant numbers, we're not talking about those fake-ass asylum seekers at the border. We're not talking about the actual, like, legitimate refugees that come in. And we're not talking about the um, international uh, students that come in. Or, the like, when we look at these numbers, we're getting close to almost a million people enter Canada every single year. But if we even just take the immigration numbers, 300,000 at least for the last four years, well, then you are uh, then in those million jobs that have been created, you now have 1.2 million people, new arrivals to this country, who need jobs. So you actually have, you actually have negative 200,000 jobs than where you started four years ago. But none of this is being capitalized by the conservatives. None of this is going to be addressed by the liberals or any of the other parties here in Canada. But uh, just talking a little bit more, again, about um, about what would be an effective ad when it comes to people feeling left behind and not being able to get ahead. Here's a better ad that was from the actually from the Liberals back in 2015, and the symbolism in it says everything. This is what's happening to millions of Canadians in 10 years under Stephen Harper. His idea is to give benefits to the wealthy, but make cuts to everything else has made it harder for most people to get ahead. And Mulcair promises more cuts. Now is not the time for cuts. In my plan, we'll kickstart the economy by investing in jobs and growth and lowering taxes for our middle class. That's real change. So that one 
was quite effective for the symbolism that the liberals were trying to get off, were trying to present. When they had Justin Trudeau walking on an escalator, not getting anywhere, this is something that a lot of people could relate to back in the back uh, in 2015 like this was exactly the type of thing that it, after nine years or so of a government being empowered you're you, there's a lot of problems that still don't get addressed and a lot of people who grow fed up with the current government and want something different so when you put this symbolism in of what the average canadian could have felt like walking working every day and not being able to get ahead pay their bills that was extremely effective. And then to have it when he starts saying his plan, that it starts working and they're, and they're working forward, you could see why this ad might resonate with some people. This was a missed opportunity with Andrew Shear, this ad right here. He, he's just going to be appealing to those that already are going to vote for him, already are going to support him. He's not gaining any new voter, and it's not really going to attract any of the swing voters or those people that don't pay attention to politics but as election season rolls around they kind of just sort of figure out what's going on over the last four years and what these parties are promising there's plenty of people that are like that but he's not going to gain anyone from this ad now it's still early they could still come out with something effective still come out with something good but this ad was a missed opportunity if you ask me so those are the two slogans for the liberals and for the conservatives. We'll end up seeing what uh, we'll end up seeing more ads as uh, the election season moves on. But uh, I think for now that's everything. I want to thank you all for joining me on the podcast today. Uh, well, on the channel, I don't do a podcast anymore. Uh, I'm Adrian Lloyd. This is just my stupid opinion.